Koma and Konnichiwa. Plus, Yabusero. Will here to the Pala Tai Chi. Doing the brief intro so you understand the video how it's coming up. Plus, throwing in my two cents. Hopefully, it's worth a quarter for you. And my Magneto. Hand gesture. Talking briefly and concisely about with the greatest Pokemon ever. Who knew? Plasticized rubber protective molding off a prefab shelving. Way to go, Ikea. All right, so you see the tagline here. And so, all of the stuff going on, Dawn Frogs, and the Japan Frogs say, come see, come see. It's, it's a little bit upsetting to see. Not because I'm partial to France, but I'm partial to having multiple degrees which were tailored towards environmental sciences. And so, the world is not yet ready to go green, especially when you see, behold, that's all a bunch of sulfur dioxide in the sky going on there, folks. You can see the yellowish tinge to it. It's not a temperature inversion, it's all the coal burn, burning going on. And so that's what's happening. All right, so you see the tagline here, or rather the title and the credentials, and rather the credentials. Mark with a C, Murano. Or is it Murano? No, Murano. ClimateDepot.com founder. And so he's talking sense. Look, I, I, I studied all this stuff in the 90s when all the doomsayers first started coming out. And I was talking sense vis-a-vis the UN. Right? And this UN, I, I think the globalist concept, even in the connotations of globalist, connotations, connotation of globalist, all starts with the UN. I mean, the UN is definitely a feckless organization. It's just that there are so many more nations involved, and so much more money involved that it still sticks around as opposed to its predecessor, the League of Nations, which was dissolved, which is just as feckless. Maybe not as much as feckless. I'm just saying, and hey, this is a poly sports rant. And so you'll hear some like good talking points. It's like the UN's there in New York and the USA. Uh, a lot of it, our tax dollars going into that. We have to hear about all this nonsense. And then in closing, I'll hate this guy because he's on uh, Stu Barney lately. 6.0600 in the morning, Pacific time. 0900 for you on the East Coast. You should, it's three hours, it's a lot to try to fast forward through speed watch, as it were, as opposed to speed reading. But the great Stu Barney, I backed him up, got a hashtag started on his behalf. This guy right here, what he's at right now, Cal. I'm talking about Big Brother in the form of you will be shocked. I keep warning you all. Amazon and Facebook are evil, even more so than Walmart. You will be shocked to hear about these patents that one is seeking out and one was rewarded. I'm sorry. I kind of remember patents sort of involving like a, a engineering moving part, not some algorithmic trying to predict where you're going to go or if you're a suspicious character based on facial recognition. That's what you're going to hear. All right, thanks for watching. No silly DUIs while you're out there. Roll. Well, all day. Back to my editorial, top of the hour. My statement is, voters are not willing to pay to fix climate change. And they're certainly not willing to fix climate change whilst the world's largest carbon polluter, China, does absolutely nothing about it. Let's bring in Climate Depot's Mark Morano. Look, I'm making two points, Mark. Number one, voters won't pay more for energy now to fix a problem down the road. Number two, voters will not sacrifice now whilst China does nothing. Where am I going? Are you with me on this? Yeah, yes, completely. I mean, from a political, economic, climate, and cost-benefit analysis point of view, you are 100% correct. Uh, what's happened now is we've seen the face of climate tax failure, and it is French President Emmanuel Macron. He is the face. He has made himself the poster boy of the UN Paris Climate Pact, and he's told middle-class French that who are facing skyrocketing fuel taxes from his policies that they can wait for public transit, that they can carpool, and that basically they have to be in it to save the world because what they're doing is noble and none of the French are buying it and that rebellion is spreading. You know, in my editorial at the top of the hour, I quoted from the Wall Street Journal today an editorial about climate change in the French. And the last few lines 
noted that NASA, North American Space Administration, using satellites, shows that the world is a lot greener than it used to be because there's more carbon and that's plant food. I mean, that, that's kind of the other side of climate change, isn't it? Is that a positive side to it? Oh, absolutely. Peer-reviewed studies are showing the greening of planet Earth, including deserts. And in my book, The Politically Incorrect Guide to Climate Change, I quote Nobel Prize-winning scientists and others who say that the Earth is in a CO2 famine right now. In other words, CO2, historically, geologically speaking, is low. So the idea that the United Nations can say, we face a catastrophe 100 years from now, unless we sacrifice today, no one buys it scientifically, no one buys it instinctively on a human level. And we have protests now in Canada, we have Brazil canceling the UN Climate Summit. A lot of this credit goes to President Donald Trump, who by by pulling the United States out of the Paris Agreement is causing a domino effect. At this summit I just got back from in Poland, the UN Climate Summit, we had Saudi Arabia, Kuwait, Russia, all refusing to sign on to this alarmist UN report which came out in October. So this is major progress for uh, you know people who care about energy security and sovereignty and are against the UN agenda. Now I take no position. I'm not uh, in my editorials. I'm not arguing that yes, it climate change exists. Yeah. Yes, it's human cause. I don't take a position. But what's your position? Is the cl is the planet warming? And is if it is warming, is it the result of human activity? Where do you come from? It's very simple. Humans can impact the climate, but any impact they've had is indistinguishable from from uh, from the past. In other words, you cannot distinguish a human concept. I, I have chapters in my book on this, quoting former United Nations scientists who've now turned against the UN, making that point. And even and I would go further. Even if we can, even if you believe we face a climate crisis, if we had to rely on the United Nations and EPA through climate taxes to save us, we would all be doomed because they admit that their their solutions would have no impact on the climate. The UN Paris Agreement was supposed to save us. The UN now freely admits that just three years from that, 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 that is completely inadequate according to their latest predictions. So this is a political and economic movement. It has nothing to do with the actual climate. They're talking about central transformation. That's what the UN climate chief has actually said. We seek a centralized transformation that will make life different. This isn't about the climate. It's about imposing their agenda using a climate scare on people. And as we've seen, in France, where they're the most advanced in terms of de in implementing this policy, they're utterly failing. Mark Morano, thank you very much for being with us today. Thank you. One day, maybe, I'll see your opinions and your studies quoted in the mainstream media, but it might be a <laughs> long way away. Got that? Okay. Thanks, Mark. See you soon. I consider you mainstream, uh, Stuart. Thanks. <laughs> you do? All right. Yeah. <laughs> well, sure. Take it. We're not. That's the mainstream. mainstream. <laughs> Russia used social networks to promote then-candidate Donald Trump in the 2016 election. Come in, Harvard Law Fellow, Vivek Wadwa. Vivek, you respond to this report from the Senate. It sounds like pretty damning stuff. Stuart, when governments do it, it's not called fake news, it's called propaganda. This is what they do. Now, the, it's not only the Russians that are doing it, it's also the Iranians, it's also the North Koreans, and most of all the Chinese. This is what governments do against governments. The question Let's repeat that is, phrase again. Why most of all the, the Chinese. doing all this surveillance and profiling, and then why are they making it available to anyone and everyone at practically no price? In other words, they're giving this away, information away for nothing. You can steal it from them at will. And then if you want to do advertising, you can buy it from them in rubles. I mean, this is what the problem is over here, that our own companies have weaponized social media and they're selling it to the lowest bidders. Uh, they're not going to get away with it forever, are they? Well, I hope not, and this is why it's good that the Senate is looking at this, that government has become aware, that we have become aware, because this has been happening for many years without our being aware of it. It just happened that um, it was used by the Russians in the elections as well as everyone else, and now uh, they got caught. So something has to be done about it for sure. And I, I just have this feeling of big brother, and I've said this many times on this program, and I think you're in agreement with me, Vivek, but I've got two items which I would describe as big brother-ish. One, a new patent shows Amazon may be trying to create a database of suspicious persons using facial recognition. That's a big problem for me. Number two, it is Facebook's a got and, a patent. And looking, Amazon hold on a second. Facebook is looking for a patent. Anyone who wants to buy it from them. Facebook is looking for a patent that can predict your destination before you get there. I mean, these are two items that are just stink of big brother, right? 
I completely, completely agree with you, my friend. This is terrifying. This is a dark side of technology, and there are no checks and balances on these companies. It's all about money, money, money to them. So they'll sell their souls in return for some money. It's but how do you very stop this? I mean, how do you stop this? When you've got facial recognition technology, how do you stop a company from recognizing every person in the world, knowing exactly who they are, and identifying them as they walk down the street or they communicate with anybody else? What do you do about that? Stuart, regulations are generally bad, but regulations are also needed in, in, in things like this. We need to basically tell these companies that they're not allowed to, to, to capture our information and store it, and if they do uh, store it and it gets stolen, they're going to pay heavy penalties for this. That they're going to, it's going to cost them billions of dollars. So you have to stop them by law. I mean, we need protection. This is why we have a constitution. This is why we have laws to protect us. It needs to be a basic human right that we are entitled to our own privacy, that, we're not, that they're not watching us everywhere we go, watching everything we do. So next thing, Amazon wants to have these boxes in our house that are watching us. They're ready to do the Alexa and these screens. They want to be watching us 24-7, listening to our conversations, predicting what we're going to do, when we're going to do it and then selling this information to anyone who wants it, this should not be allowed. You know, it's a good thing that this is all coming to the surface because it's been happening for too long and there have been no ways to stop it. We have to do this. Vibe, you're our social media watcher and we appreciate it. We'll come back again soon. Thank, Thank you, you Robert. Robert.